Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the online Tech Talk series, Artificial Intelligence and Our Future, that's organized by Coquitlam Public Library. I'm Shirley, my colleagues are Armand, and we are from Coquitlam Public Library. Today, we are honored and glad to have Sarah. She's going to be a conversation about um, artificial intelligence and our future. Sarah is a professional registered engineer with more than 15 years of experience in technology, energy, healthcare, and disaster response. So um, maybe let's start, um, Sarah, let's start um, and tell, uh, tell us more about yourself, please, Sarah. Sure. Thanks so much for having me today. Um, I'm very happy to be um, on this call and chatting with you all about um, AI, a very interesting topic. Um, as Shirley said, my background's in engineering. I studied electrical engineering for my undergrad and my master's. And I've been working in the engineering and technology sector for quite some time now, most recently at Unity Technologies um, as a senior program manager. Uh, and Unity is the world's largest um, uh, platform for creating real-time 3D content, which, which means if anybody you know uh, plays video games or watches uh, animated movies or has any uh, experience with VR or a uh, AR, artificial, um, 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 uh, not a AI, but uh, augmented reality, sorry. Um, the vast majority of it is built in the Unity platform. And we do um, a lot, a lot of AI and machine learning and simulation and synthetic data. So I'm very happy to speak to that. Actually, I just want to um, add that last Friday was my last day at Unity, and I've now joined another company, but I'm more than happy to continue speaking to this topic. Thank you, Sarah. So, Sarah, we have another question for you. So, what are the different organizations that you work for? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, some of the different organizations that I've worked for, uh, uh, for some of the people that know me, I've, I've shifted careers a fair bit, which seems to be I theme more and more as we catapult into the future. Um, I worked in humanitarian um, uh, uh, response and disaster and relief uh, with um, organizations like Doctors Without Borders and um, the International Committee of the Red Cross and the World Bank um, uh, in at least a dozen countries around the world, mostly war zones and um, uh, disease outbreaks, um, uh, things like that. I've also worked in the energy sector for many, many years uh, in Canada and the US, and um, most recently also in tech, in big tech for Unity. Great. Um, so we just, I'm sure everybody will be wondering, how did you get interest in artificial intelligence? Well, it's everywhere, all around you. I think one of the things that really got me excited and interested was we have um, we have someone at Unity who is the uh, VP of, of AI, uh, and he's just incredibly interesting. His name is Danny Lynch. He's worked in, um, he's worked at Unity, uh, Amazon, um, uh, Uber, uh, Microsoft as head of uh, AI again and again and again. And he would have these talks and I would listen to these talks and just be in complete awe of the types of things that he's done that we're doing at Unity and that the future holds for AI. And you know, I have small two small kids. One is almost four years old and one is um, about nine months. And you can't help but think, what is the future gonna be like for them? And how is AI gonna impact them? And how has it impacted them already? And what, how is my life different? If, you, if I look back 40 years, I mean, we didn't even have the internet. so the rate at which we're moving into the future is incredible. And AI is gonna be a big cornerstone of all of that. Okay, so in your opinion, what is artificial intelligence? Can you give us some um, definitions? Sure, so this is, this is an incredibly interesting point and I'd love to spend a little bit of time talking about this. You know, different people have different definitions of what is um, AI. So I, I just want to spend a little bit of time on this. You know, when, when we have regular um, computer programming or algorithms, it's sort of like a lot, just a logical statement, you know, if then. So if you can imagine, let's say I said there was a robot on one side of the road and I wanted it to pick up a box and cross the road and go and put it on the other side. And that was the algorithm I gave it. And it just had to do that. It had a stack of boxes and it would go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Um, if a car came and hit it, it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't step out of the way. 
Um, if a wall was put in front of it, it would just stand in front of the wall. It wouldn't figure out how to go around it. That is an example uh, of just an algorithm. If we talk about AI, the definition that we're talking about or machine learning, let's say, um, it's a different way of defining a problem. It's, it's giving something um, an end goal with a reward and then allowing, allowing that machine uh, to take in information and use the information on a trial and error basis to be able to reach that reward. So I, I want to give the example, I have this, not, I have a really sweet nine month old, right? And if you guys have anybody on the phone has had kids, you, you can see this is totally what they do. You know, they start to crawl, they start to pull themselves up and they pick everything and they put it in their mouth. They smack it on the table. They, they're using their senses, taste, touch, smell, they're using their senses to collect points of information. And then based on trial and error again and again and again, they're forming an opinion um, uh, based on a set of what we call reward functions. So we call it reinforcement learning. So this is basic, basically nature is uh, action. You, you observe, you take action, you, you get a reward and then you repeat to make, to make it better and better and better. So what do human beings do? We're here to survive. We're here to multiply. We're here to, to not get hurt. We're here to eat. So if we um, say that that is the reward function and for a computer, it could be like cross the road and don't get hit and put all the packages on the other side, right? And then you give it a, a lot of information and ability to collect more information, then it becomes not just a straight algorithm where you say, pick up a box and go and put it on the other side it becomes um, an optimization based on bounds. So you give it an endpoint that's, that's liked and a starting point, and then it collects information along the way and tries to optimize um, and create uh, trial and error, trial and error, and gets better, 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 and, until it reaches its goal. So artificial intelligence for a machine, just like for our babies when they're first learning, is trying to use what they have around them to get to a goal uh, in as optimal a, a way as possible. The thing that's scary is that it takes my, my son maybe a year to learn how to walk and talk and it could take uh, a computer a um, couple minutes, a couple hours tops. Oh, that's interesting. So Sarah, in your opinion, how can we apply artificial intelligence in our day-to-day -day lives? Well, we already are, um, you know, there's quite a lot of um, things around us that are using some level of AI. And sometimes it's hard to know whether it's an algorithm or AI. So for example, if you have Alexa at home or um, my daughter loves to say, hey, Google, play Peppa the Pig on Netflix, right? And she's learned how to do that even though I, it drives me crazy. Um, you know, with that, is that an algorithm or is that AI, right? Is it just picking up the word play and then Netflix and then the, the name of the program or is there something more um, behind it? So we are using, and maybe this is gonna touch on some more questions that you have later on about what AI is gonna be like in 10 to 20 years. We are using some, I'd say uh, lower level AI, mm -hmm. but into the future, it's gonna get more and more and more advanced. So let me give you a couple of examples. Um, at Unity, we have a lot of games. People, people create games in the Unity game engine. Mm -hmm. And so inside games, you have a bunch of different players. So imagine you're, whether it's a game on a console or you're in a virtual reality space, right? Mm -hmm. So there's you, and then there's others in the game, and the others could be uh, like avatars, not real, um, like a, mm -hmm. a, 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 play, a, a player. Um, in the game. And uh, these could have some level of intelligence incorporated into them so that um, they start to learn based on your behaviors, right? And they get smarter and better. And they know, hey, if, I, if she always goes left, so if I do this, then I'm gonna beat her, right? So 
with games, for example, you start to see that a fair bit. Um, one of the things that I saw at Unity that we were working on was super interesting was, for example, um, in healthcare, if you're um, a nurse or a doctor or um, anybody who graduates and needs a certain amount of practicum years uh, to be able to do their job, like usually you would do rounds of the hospital, right? And you would learn the stuff. You can now in certain states in the US and more and more in Canada too, you can do a lot of that in simulated environments. And so uh, that means like you sit in front of a computer or you're going to a, an experience on an AR or VR and you, you, you have like a scenario play out and you have to figure out how to deal with it. Now, inside of that, you can have some intelligence built in. So the other people that are, um, let's say the sick person or the, the, your colleague doctor who's trying to work with you, um, they start to learn about you and they start to try and trick you to try and see uh, how they can make the simulation harder and harder and harder uh, so that you learn. So it's not like, okay, I'm entering this game and I do A and then B and then C and then D and then it's finished. Oh, thank you very much. I, I scored, right? It's adaptive learning. Um, and it, it creates some level of um, intelligence in in the people who are, or it's not real people, it's avatars that are playing against you. Uh, to, to create and simu simulate real world environments. So that's just one example of where we're at and where we could be going. Another example is self-driving cars, for example, right? Like right now, there's a fair bit of intelligence built into our cars, more and more they're becoming electronic. But in the future, there's going to be a huge amount of intelligence in there. So what is the reward function? What is the optimization? Don't kill people. <laughs> right? <laughs> and of course, and don't get into accidents. And then how, how are, how am I trying to achieve that? I'm, I'm, I'm collecting information from my, my environment all the time, because I have machine vision, for example, and I've got computers, uh, um, sensors, um, vision, essentially around the car. And at the same time, I have a ton of information that's been uploaded into me, based on past um, experiences, that allows me to make optimal decisions. Um, on another example, for example, is in, is in healthcare. So imagine, um, let's say for me, I have uh, a certain DNA makeup and my mom and dad um, have a certain DNA makeup and my ethnicity and the places I've lived uh, contribute to some extent. Imagine if there's something um, called disease mapping where they're bringing all this information and statistics and probability about your DNA and your, your prevalence for disease, your family history, your ethnicity, the places you've traveled, all of that to predict what kind of disease you might get and then mitigate um, what might happen. So these are all examples of where we are today um, and where we're gonna get better and better in the future. Sorry if that was a very long-winded way of answering some of the questions you had. No, no. Uh, okay, we get another one. So um, what do you think? Like, How would a artificial intelligence technology affect our work? And would um, artificial intelligence replace our job in the workplace? No, that's, that's a really good question. I think people, rightfully so, always have a concern around, um, you know, is this going to replace my job? And uh, it's not just AI, you know, it's robotics, anything to do with technology. Um, there isn't a perfect answer for that. I feel like it'll just shift, right? Like right now, if you look at um, job postings for anyone um, uh, that is well-versed in AI or machine learning or Unity, uh, the, plat the, the platform or any kind of software programming, it's in such high demand and you have the pick of the letter. You can choose, you can, <laughs> take one position if it doesn't suit you go and take another one there's a there's a lot of demand whereas some of the things that we used to do 10 years ago I graduated 15 years ago the vast majority of the stuff that I knew back then is totally obsolete by now so I think to answer your question it's not some obviously some things will become uh, um, obsolete but we need to continually retrain and retrain. And that's why at the beginning I said, 
you know, I've shifted careers quite a few times. I think that's sort of the becoming more and more the theme. Um, we need to reinvent and recreate ourselves um, to stay relevant, especially in the field of technology and stay on top of the latest developments in order to be able to be applicable. So um, if, if, if someone is uh, interested in, in staying up, um, skilled uh, up to the latest technology, I don't see this being any uh, threat, quite the opposite. I see it being not only potential for new, very interesting jobs, but also being a part of that future that is um, that is a bit more responsible because there's a certain amount of concerns that I have as a parent of where this is going. And I'd like to be a part of the solution in creating the boundaries that are required, just like just like my my son likes to explore and there's stairs in my house, I put, you know, I put the barrier up so he doesn't explore and fall down the steps. The same, you know, if we're creating this new world of AI and and um, robotics and so on, we need to make sure that we put in uh, parameters in place uh, and be a part of that discussion so that so that the future is what we want it to be and, and it's not as scary. Awesome. I will be uh, asking some questions as well. Um, how will AI change our future? Um, and do you, could you give us some examples of that? Yeah, a lot. I mean, I think, I think some people, um, you know, we watch a lot of movies like The Terminator. I don't, did you ever watch the movie Her? I haven't watched Her, but definitely have seen The Terminator. <laughs> so if anybody on this call hasn't watched the, mo the movie Her, H-E-R, I really recommend it because it's all about AI. And it's crazy how accurate it is. And the ending of the movie is just uh, spooky and really, really good. Um, so, so what does the future look like? I think one of the things that we've seen again and again in movies is this like evil uh, overlord that <laughs> all of a sudden like in our robot like switches and decides that they need to take care of us. And because they need to take care of us, they have to imprison us or something like that. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that we'll get there and I don't think it's us against the machines. And that's one of the reasons why I was saying, I think we need to be a part of this uh, every step along the way. Um, and there needs to be really good regulation uh, set in place, which is a whole other topic I'm happy to talk about. But what the future looks like, I think is not so, um, not only black and white, but uh, one or zero. I think it, it's going to be a lot more mixed. So, whereas you know, you, um, whereas we might say, okay, there's the machines and there's us. Actually, I think we are going to start using machines and AI. Um, whether you know, sometimes people like Elon Musk and others talk about um, like implants and like cyborgs, and <laughs> maybe we're going to have extra processors in our brains. I don't know. I mean, to some extent, you can argue that you know, like your iPhone is. Uh, already some sort of you know extra brain because it certainly is for me because I can't remember all the passwords that I have for everything and I store it on my phone but I really think more and more we're, we as humans are going to use this technology for our benefit to catapult us way past where we were before I mean really take a look at how fast we've grown when it comes to technology I, I'm turning 40 this year and I remember I was in high school when um, I first heard about the internet. Mm -hmm. I remember I was, uh, I had just graduated university when I first heard about smartphones. And, and when you think about, you know, when's the first time you had a smartphone, it's not that long ago. It's yeah. really not that long ago. So if we've accelerated so much in such a short amount of time, imagine how much further we can go. And human beings as a whole, we've only been around for a couple hundred thousand years. So our, our brain, in terms of DNA and size, hasn't grown. It's the same, right? Mm -hmm. And yet we've been able to go from like picking berries in the bush <laughs> to this, this group who's creating artificial intelligence, artificial general intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, all these fabulously amazing stuff. But only within, if you think of it in terms of like how long we've been around and how long we've been doing this technology stuff, it's the equivalent of a, of a, of a nanosecond uh, on the time scale. So um, I, I, um, I'm excited, I'm scared, 
but bottom line is I want to be a part of it. Yeah. Oh, definitely. So I guess jumping off from that questions, what will um, AI development be like in 10 to 20 years? Or what do you think will, how will it look? I, I think that all the time, absolutely all the time, like something as simple as uh, sometimes I have to go from here to, let's say, the airport or to Richmond, right? And you put into Google Maps and it tells you when you're going to get there. And it's crazy how accurate it is, right? And there's like traffic and there's roadblocks and somehow it knows and it's correct to the minute. Mm -hmm. um, and it's getting better and better and better. And I don't know if you've seen that extra. It's got this extra little function now where it's got like AR. You can project augmented reality on top of it. So... Not seen um, that. Might, have you seen it yet? No, I haven't seen it yet. So, so um, I don't know if that was a beta, but like you can hold up your phone as you're walking. Cause you know, when you're trying to find something and you're like, I know I'm here, it says I'm here, but I can't find the thing. Yeah. Or you're walking and you're not sure if you're walking towards it or away from it. So you can hold it up, hold your camera up. And it's got this like AR layer and it shows you like dots of where to go yeah. or yeah. like, or like, you're here, it, it basically overlays on top of the environment that you see um, uh, where you're trying to go. So that's already that's already here. Um, where we're gonna be 10 to 20 years, I don't know, it terrifies me, but it also really, really excites me. For sure, self-driving cars, absolutely, hands down, I think even like five years from now, uh, we'll be there. Um, for sure, everything is going to be much more um, there's going to be a lot more augmented reality and virtual reality. And there's a debate always between like, are we going to have more AR or VR? Um, personally, I think more AR, but we'll see. Um, and incorporated into those is going to be a lot of AI. There's going to be a whole lot of machine uh, vision because more and more everything has a camera on it. Yeah. Um, and with, with camera comes information and with information comes training of computers to be more and more like us. Yeah. And I don't know if you've heard of the word, have you heard of the word singu this, the singularity? I have not. So the singularity is a point in the future. And some people like talk about it as if it's like this really spooky thing that's gonna happen. It's a point in the future where um, oh you're not gonna know whether you're talking to a, a machine or a human being because behind a computer, because they're going to be that advanced. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just like being able to answer intelligently, but it's also um, what we call uh, intrinsic uh, uh, characteristics like curiosity and happiness and empathy and more human. Uh, more human. Yeah. So yeah. that point in the future, some people say is not that far away. Uh, so yeah, let's see. Awesome. And what are some typical jobs that are related to AI right now? Or what can we be prepared for in the new future? So for maybe like some students, what they can look for? or just I think there's a ton out there, just a ton. And again, if this is an area you're interested in, if you're studying, if I could go back, I'd, stu I'd, I'd, I'd study this very deeply and, and become an expert in this because you'll ha always have a job. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're studying computer science or if you're studying engineering, um, in particular electrical or computer engineering, um, those are a couple of good areas to study. And then if you specifically want to work in the space, there's a, a bazillion tech companies hiring right now. And, and AI is one of those things that it, it's not applicable to one industry. <clears throat> it's applicable to every industry. I mean, we can use it in finance, healthcare, um, automotive and techno, uh, uh, and transportation, um, construction and, um, and, and architecture, every single sector that you can imagine. A everything from, from that to like, there's these little robots that uh, will deliver food to your house. So like you're hungry and you order, and then um, <clears throat> they're, they're, I haven't seen them here yet, but they're definitely in the States. They, they will, it's like, it's like Uber Eats style, but it's like a little cute little robot. It'll go to the restaurant, <laughs> they'll load up the food and do, 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 do. it'll come to your house and you'll just pick it up. It's so cute. Yeah. Um, but like the optimization of how you send those guys out and, and, and where they go is, is, is so interesting. And I 
totally see like delivery robots being on every single sidewalk in a couple of years. Yeah, that yeah. would be pretty cool to see. <laughs> yeah, that would be really nice during exams, I'm sure, for students when you're you know sitting down and trying to. I remember when I was in university and we had final exams and I had to like stop for a minute and go grab a pizza and it was like midnight and everything was closed. I was like, oh, if only somebody could just bring me some food, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can have that. Yeah, so it seems like it, AI is going to be, it's here to stay and it's going to be just in our day-to-day -day lives in the next, like, especially in the next couple of years that like everything is kind of changing and it's we're, it seems like we're kind of in like a transition period, I guess. Yeah, I feel, I feel like we are. It's interesting you say it, it is a transition period, but where does it end? And, you know, transition feels like it goes from one uh, steady state to another steady state. But I don't know what the other side is. Mm -hmm. So is it just like a continuous change? I, I yeah, no. Idea. I guess one of those questions that it's a wait and see, and we'll have to see what happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, th those are the questions that we had for today. Uh, thank you, Sarah, so much for joining us this afternoon. My pleasure. I learned a lot. Hopefully, everyone else watching this has as well. And thank you so much.